Been to the Las Vegas Strip lately? <laughs> Blink, miss a week or two, and everything's different. Bleachers and grandstands, a metal jungle up and down the boulevard, ever bigger and bigger LED screens, multi-million dollar steakhouses. Do you need serenity now? We got you covered. We found a beautiful slice of autumn in an unlikely spot. Check it out. So get ready, because this adventure starts right now. My friends, it has been nearly a month since your Las Vegas Inside and Out correspondents took our cameras to the Strip with so much happening down there these days that is way too long. So come along with us on a sunny Sunday afternoon and let's go check out the status of all those construction projects happening around Center Strip. We're going to leave our car right here at Park MGM because this is our favorite convenient parking garage. I'm guessing you're most curious about the progress on this one, so let's start right here at Bellagio. In our update video last month, we told you the crews would be starting construction on the grandstands for the Formula One race on September 15th. <laughs> so here you go. Take it all in. They've made a lot of progress, and it literally does span the entire frontage of Bellagio. As we were told, they started at the north end, so those seats are installed. Still to be installed on the south side. And in the middle, the high ticket areas that are enclosed behind glass. Up on the pedestrian bridge looking south is the best way to get a sense of the sheer magnitude of what's going on here. Now, is Lake Bellagio still back there? I'll tell you what, you have to maneuver yourself to just the right spot near the north doors of Bellagio to see it. But it is here, obscured by the backside of all that construction. In case you've been under a rock all year, the reason for all this is the very first Las Vegas Grand Prix taking place the weekend before Thanksgiving. Thursday and Friday will be practice runs and qualifying and the race itself is set for Saturday, November 18th. The track runs 3.8 miles with a route that encompasses sections of Las Vegas Boulevard, Harmon Avenue, Coval Avenue, and Sands Avenue, and the cars will make 50 laps. If you're on the strip these days, you can't miss the structures going up everywhere to support the race. And here's a news flash, there's an all-day launch party at Caesars set for November 5th. Moving down the boulevard, we're by the Cosmo now. There are lighting trusses installed all along the center median. The lighting is necessary since the race will be run at night. This is the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Harmon Avenue, one of the key intersections along the route. Just check out all the structures at this corner alone. While we're here, we just realized we haven't checked on the progress of Project 63 since June. Construction on this shopping dining complex here at Harmon Corner began two and a half years ago. It's about 240,000 square feet on four floors, but as of today, only a few businesses are open. The Vegas Sundry Shop opened this spring. And an Ariat store and art museum are in the works. Ah, so what is this just a few steps from the Crystal's entry door? It's called the Ross Museum of Illusions. Yes, the same brand as the Ross Discount Clothing Store. We're in for something unusual for sure if these box heads are any indication. <laughs> all right, we'll bite. Let's go see what this is all about. 
This attraction just opened recently, and here's a money-saving tip. If you buy tickets in advance on the web, you save $6. Adult admission is $39 instead of $45. On the website, the Museum of Illusions is described as a brilliant collection of perspective changing rooms, enthralling installations, and spellbinding images. And of course, as you exit, you land in the gift shop, stocked with fun and unusual games to puzzle and perplex you when you head home. One of the most highly anticipated tenants of 63 is this, Ocean Prime. You will surely work up an appetite circling around the entire complex to find the exclusive elevator that takes you up to the fourth floor. This $20 million restaurant is the flagship location for Ocean Prime, a beautiful and elegant venue inspired by the sea that opened in June. The lounge and dining room feature earthy colors, blue ocean shades, and wavy lines reminiscent of sandy beaches. Plus, there's a 2,500 square foot terrace overlooking Harmon Corner. In this location, the heart of city center, Ocean Prime is poised for great success. Pivoting to the opposite side of the strip, over there is another shopping mecca, one that is undergoing a big upgrade. I'm talking about the Miracle Mile Shops. The new design includes installation of 20,000 square feet of LED screens on the exterior alone. Here on the south end, all that work is done, and the screen is dazzling the tourists with constant promos no matter where you're standing. Panning over to the northern end of the shops near the Paris, this LED work is still in process. The strategy of these huge LED screens is to make Miracle Mile stand out amid the many shopping and entertainment options on the Strip. <laughs> if it ends up looking like this early rendering, that's definitely going to work. Now. Just a few days ago, Paula walked through the Miracle Mile to see what's been done on the inside. This mall, housed inside the Planet Hollywood Resort, first opened as the Desert Passage in 2000. In 2007, it became the Miracle Mile, but this is the first time it has been renovated in over 16 years. The goal was to brighten and modernize the interior, including fresh new ceilings and light fixtures. In addition to the giant screens outside, about 1,600 square feet of LED screens have also been installed on the interior. The owners of the mall characterize their target clientele as shoppers who want to have an experience to find the Las Vegas version of their hometown store right here at the Miracle Mile. The Zappos Theater has been renamed to the Bact Theater since we were last here, but the residencies in this terrific venue still feature big draw talent. Of course, we old timers remember when Desert Passage was a part of the Aladdin and had all that superb Moroccan theming. Happily, the renovation maintained most of that, and when you look up as you walk the circular mile of shops, restaurants, and entertainment offerings, the facade is still above your head. That even includes the ship, appropriately named the Desert Passage. Also saved was one of the Strip's well-loved free attractions, the Rain Show. The new and improved version will eventually feature fresh water and light displays, so stay tuned for all that. All right, one more stop. Let's spin through crystals before we call it a day. Just inside, 
dry bar famed for no cuts no color just blowouts is having a little soiree on this sunday afternoon look at that charcuterie board oh my goodness and there's even a dj spinning the tunes for you while you get your hair fluffed for your night out Look at this. The horticultural team here at Crystals is just as skilled as those guys over at Bellagio. <laughs> we simply could not resist going down there for a closer look. There's a lot to love about these beds full of vibrant autumn color, but first, let's talk about the apples. We don't remember seeing apples used like this before in a garden theme. Second, we absolutely love these spirals of autumn leaves above the bed. Very unique and very festive. And then this old salvage door leading to a human figure completely covered with autumn leaves. Now that, my friends, is imaginative. If you find yourself in this area of the strip during the fall, it's well worth your time to stroll through the shops of crystals, if only to enjoy this beautiful garden. Well, my friends, this was my first time back down on the Strip, and I got to film all that stuff in crystals. I'll tell you what, it was gorgeous. And on the flip side, he also got to film all that craziness at Bellagio, standing across the street in front of Paris. <laughs> I've never seen the Strip look so messy and, and just absolutely un unappetizing. Yes, and because the sidewalk is closed in front of Bellagio, all those people are actually across the street now, yeah. and it was a madhouse on Sunday afternoon. It was hot, crazy, very busy, hot, yeah. crowded. <laughs> crowded, and of course you can't, it's very hard to see the, the, the water anymore. You have like to see almost it. impossible. Yeah, but now if you're, if you're eating at, the, you know, at some of the restaurants that are back there, I think you got a pretty good view. Yeah, yeah. Prime and Lago, Spago, uh, like that. But other than that, you're never going to see the dancing water. <laughs> hey, before we go on, let me just uh, address the elephant in the room, which is my nose. Uh, the bandages are getting a little bit smaller. <laughs> and uh, I want to thank everybody for all the kind words. This, of course, is my first back on time camera except for Paul's Kitchen. I had a little thing where I ate a cupcake. By the way, check out Paul's Kitchen. She's doing a really great job. We need subscribers over there. Thank but I, I, <laughs> I do want to thank you all uh, for all the kind words. And uh, we just have a couple more things we need to get through before the first of the year. And then I think we're going to be all back 100%, right? Well, we are sure trying. And we've got a live stream coming up soon. So stay tuned for that. And hopefully that will be without the bandage. Regardless, we're having a live stream. <laughs> All right. So we were down at Bellagio. What happened down there, Paula? What happened at Bellagio? We ran into an entire family, three generations from Denmark. So we want to give a big shout out to the Thiessen family. They have been following us since the beginning, like way long time ago. And we actually finally met them. What a beautiful family, I'm telling you. And such and, fans. Oh my great. gosh, and they were so, so very, very nice. And uh, we just, it was wonderful. I'll tell you what happened. I don't hear it too well like I used to, but so Paula's, I'm hearing Paula yell at me. Apparently they were yelling at both of our names. <laughs> right, they were behind us and they were running to catch up because, you know, they're from Denmark. It's not like they're gonna be here every day. So they didn't wanna miss us and I'm so glad they didn't and I hope they had a wonderful rest of their stay. All right, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification button. Anything else you want to tell these nice people, Miss Paula? We already told you, Paula's Kitchen Wednesday. Don't miss it. It's pumpkin spice. Now tell me, is your mouth watering? Come on, join me. Hope you had a good time. We'll see you next time. Bye bye, bye everybody. everybody.